start by offering her rewards for doing so. But here, the mechanical reward is often outweighed by the fantasy or social reward. Social reward is easier to talk about. Let's start there. Prestige, fame, bragging rights, these are all social rewards. And you'll find that at this stage of the game, these matter more for many players than minor mechanical upgrades. If we can design ways to give Emily these rewards, whether it be a standing on the leaderboard, a system-wide message, or a suit of armor that lets everybody around know that she helped slay a god once, you'll draw more players like her into this level of social play than you will with any mechanical reward. Also, for many games, high-level social play plays directly into the fantasy of the game. You know when you pick up a game and you love the idea of being a character in that universe, of being a hero, of helping to save the world? That's the fantasy. Often, a group of mighty heroes desperately fighting back-to-back -back against a cataclysmic evil feels like fulfilling that fantasy. It's the epitome of why you came to that game in the first place. Successfully delivering on that feeling will encourage people like Emily to participate in this late-stage social play, people who otherwise might never have joined in. And this is true for all types of games, by the way. Really feeling like a squad, executing unit tactics, being an elite battalion, it just feels awesome. Those things play right into the fantasy of military games, obviously, but heck, even working together for an epic barn raising back in the farm bill days used fantasy to bring back the game for high-level social play. So don't neglect this aspect when you're constructing your endgame social challenges. As to the best ways to graduate Emily into this level of play, that's a bit harder to break down, because by this point, as designers, we're trusting that the community itself has come far enough to do some of the heavy lifting for us, and that they are teaching other players the ropes of endgame social play themselves. At a certain point, you really want to let the community take some ownership over the social experience. The main thing here is to cut down on iteration time for your first in-game challenges, so that if Emily's guild fails while they're learning to work as a large group, like they wipe in a raid or something, their experience isn't too frustrating and they can just get back up and try again. Okay, so at this point, Emily has completely mastered our social difficulty curve. As designers, from here on, it's all just ease of use stuff. We can try to streamline the process of finding an appropriate guild or a or battalion to work with, we can give guild masters useful in-game guild management tools, we can even do things like starting and seeding the fan wiki for our game, so that Emily and her fellow players can take it over without having to actually create one from scratch. That about wraps it up, but one last thing. I've talked a lot about easing Emily's path as she tackles new social challenges, but it's important to note, easing doesn't mean making automatic. What you want to do is make it as easy as possible for her to do what she's trying to do and see if it works. Think of good tools and good UI, in this case, as analogous to good controls for mechanics. Because even mechanics challenges aren't engaging without good controls. Ultimately, our goal should be to remove as many barriers between her and trying to solve the social challenges in front of her as possible. What we don't want to do is just take over and solve the challenges we're presenting for her. If we look to games like Warhammer Online, the open group system basically took all the challenge out of grouping, which in turn meant that players didn't form social bonds within the game because grouping became this anonymous automatic thing rather than a social challenge. If you have to err on this, err on the side of easy games, but it's something to be mindful of as you design. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed our digression on social difficulty curve. Just remember, in many games, social challenges should be just as engaging as mechanical ones. And it's our job as designers to help the player get better at these challenges so we can provide them more interesting, more nuanced social challenges as they go. See you next week. We realized that there's a particular aspect of game design that we really should talk about. 
First move advantage. And to help us do that is our new artist friend here, Adam. First move advantage is exactly what it sounds like, and it's one of the trickiest design problems for anyone making turn-based games. You see, in most turn-based games, being up one turn on your opponent is a significant advantage. Therefore, as a designer, you have to build in mechanics to compensate for it. In Magic, the second player gets to draw an extra card. In Go, the player playing white gets 7.5 free points. In Hearthstone, the second player gets to draw an extra card, gets to mulligan an extra card, and gets a special card that lets them get one free mana. The list goes on. Ten but million. The key thing here to note is how difficult it is like to create a balanced ten million points. Yeah, ten million points. If you know anything about the history of professional Go, it's pretty much a catalog of the best players in the world realizing how good going first was. Over the last 150 years, they've continuously raised the number of points the second player gets simply for going second. Because no matter how high they raise them, it's never been quite enough to make do. On the flip side, many professional hearts yeah, players want to go second. Because the benefits of going second may be a bit overbalanced, especially for all the decks that benefit from the fact that the point is technically a spell. Hearthstone players know what I'm talking about. Okay, so as designers, how do we address this problem? Yep. Well, first, we have to identify what type of turn-based game our game is. For our purposes, there are two different types of turn-based games. Static resource games and developed resource games. Static resource games are games where players have access to all the pieces from the outset of the game, and they don't build up the board over time. These would be games like chess or Final Fantasy Tactics. Developed resource games, on the other hand, are simply games where the players build up resources over time. Games like Magic the problem of first move advantage has much more of an impact to develop resource games. And so if we find that we're working on a developed resource game, we have to be very careful of the Devante. Yeah. We're going to start up. We're going to start up getting more backgrounds and footage in, all right? Okay. Let me finish that one in about five minutes. I got the biggest score right there. Well, like buddy. 45 minutes to um, can, can you like not just pause it or something? You can. You can. Uh, yeah, but it's actually on. Wait. Oh, yeah, can. that one's online, so it just continues. Yeah, can, yeah, the, yeah, Devante, you can just pause it and then we can get back to After Effects, okay? Alright, I'll do that after. So Once I finish that. Oh, what's going on? Hey! Yeah. Who did that? <laughs> Did you download software to prevent insight? Software? Yeah, did you download software to prevent Yeah, or you like to download those Did you download software to prevent us from using the insight? What's that? So what's it about? Oh, yeah, did you uh, I'm just gonna Oh, nice thinking, buddy. Oh. But you, you understood how to make it go, right? Yeah. yeah awesome. Yeah, you, got out. You, can, you can feather the, the thing and everything, and you can make it more cool. Okay, well, once yeah. I get this, I see I Great. 
so now this. Did you land it? Yeah. Stop, or you have no games after lunch. Would that be good? Why? Because Why it's I can't been play games one hour after and 15 minutes. You have been playing games. I know. Exactly. I was like, no, no excuses. Really? No excuses. Then uh, stop the game now. Then if you want to play after lunch. All right. Let me finish that one. No. I just got a big score right there. It's okay. You can create the score again. I it's know. not that uh, you cannot do that. You did it once. You can do it again. I have some faith in your skills, buddy. You got I good know. skills. Right? Well, I was using cheats, though. Hey, that's not fair. You shouldn't be using cheats. Come on, buddy. Don't yeah, this is like me. regular. This is like if this one's <laughs> really grabbing. I know, but buddy, don't make me force you, right? Come on. There go one, right? Come on. Yeah. Just close it now, please. Really? <laughs> yes, really. But I want to finish that one. Uh, do you want me to switch off your PC? No. Do you want me to? No, I don't want you to switch the PC. Exactly. Then close it down, please. Come on, buddy. Press escape. You need to start working because oh, pressing escape will just actually pause the game. Yeah, then you can exit it. Okay. Exit it, Devonde. Hold on. Only got like one minute. Fine, you will have more gaming after uh, lunch, okay? And from tomorrow onwards, I won't allow you to single game. Why not kill no, the game? You're not listening to me, that's why. You're not listening to me, that's why. Now nah, I am listening to you. No, you're still playing. I've told you three times. I've told you three times. Come on. If it was only me alone, but... Yeah, it is only you alone. And it's not like... Huh? No, no, no. It's okay. You won't get any gaming privileges after lunch then. Why? You don't want me to have no gaming, gaming privileges? I've, I've told you three times, Devante. You haven't listened and you haven't told. I know. I have like 10 seconds. No. You had 10 seconds 10 minutes ago. Yeah. I know. Then? No excuses, Devante. I know. Let me finish the last school. That's what, if that's what it's Tony Hawk's. It's like, more like when the time it hits zero, I just continue the trip. No. If I wasn't playing Super Smash Bros. Melee. No, I know. It's hey, that, shop, that also displays a screen. It's okay. Close it. I'm Devante. You've already finished that round. Nice. I know. Get out. Get out of the game completely. Okay. Nice one, Devante. That's it.